All right, so this morning I got up bright and early. Ryan has a football game and I want to get the truck clean. I finally got Michelle's car decontaminated and washed. I didn't polish it because we're probably going to trade it, uh, which you know, kind of goes against what I normally would do. Uh, but anyway, we're uh, this morning going to get the truck clean. And then later this afternoon, I'm going to do uh, the S2000 to get that ready. We're going to go to Mystery Meat 5 tomorrow. Uh, so I want that to be clean. Come here, baby girl. You want to say hi to everybody? Kate's still in her PJs, so it's bright and early, but I got a couple of hours of a Raros football game. So we're going to do a quick uh, reset type wash on the truck. It's been what, several months, two, two and a half, three months. I think it's been about two months. Chloe! Chloe, since we, since we, Completely corrected the truck you know, I washed it several times, but I just want to I want to put some more reload on it really fast uh, So I'm going to do uh, use car pro reset and just take you through normal coating maintenance I'm gonna do the wheels and tires talk through that a little bit. I figured it'd be a little bit uh, uh, Hopefully there's some some information that I could share on the process of maintaining the coating which it was a little bit different than than just doing uh, a normal wash can you say hi to everybody with your crazy hair? Do the waves. Waves to everybody. There you go. Whoa, almost dropped you. All right, let's wash the, let's wash the truck. All right, so wheels. Again, the wheels are coated with uh, Optimum gloss coat. Did that for the, you know, the permanence of it. And then the tires have, as usual, Carpo Pearl. The, I got new brakes. And did that prior to the mountain trip. And painted the, uh, had them paint the calipers and, and the new rotors. They're just OEM rotors, but the top hats and ever the hats and everything are painted so they're nice and clean we're using you as usual my next set color tech and so the yeah you know, the beauty of having the wheels coated is that you know, they theoretically should stay cleaner. Yeah, this doesn't fit in there very well. I mean, that's right, I normally use the easy detail. This is why it's important, I think, to have both brushes just depending on the car, on what fits, you know, what fits inside the wheel well. And the only disadvantage to the easy detail is it does fling, so you have to kind of be intentional about how you use it. So anyway, you know, coating maintenance is not really any different. You just have to, like on Michelle's Tahoe, is water spot crazy. If I keep it, I'm gonna have to, which I don't think we are. She's been battling me a little bit on keeping this, on using her driving this. She's been driving around a little bit the last couple of days, especially yesterday as I was taking care of her car, getting at least acceptable. So what I did was we, we did the full three-step decontamination process, but then I just didn't polish it. You know, if I trade it in, you know, the dealer's not gonna give two craps about it, and then the next person's not gonna care. So just in interest of time, I'd rather not waste it. I don't know, waste a bunch of time. Man, this is my new, uh, this is the new gray shirt. They're going to print on Monday, finally. <sighs> Trying to, I had it all figured out, but then the 3X shirt size shirts messed it all up. So I'm having to do, because nobody really makes a decent 50-50 3X. 
And last time I did three X's, I did next level just because that was really the only option. And I think next level shirts are garbage, so. The colors aren't as good, the material is junk. Anyway, the shirts I'm hoping will be available here shortly. The decontamination package will be out soon. You know, the main thing most of you who watch all these videos are gonna want is Chemical Guy Citrus Wash. This is a stripping wash. So, with Pearl, so notice we're not really there's a little bit of dirt here, but we're not, we don't have this turning brown. With Carpro Pearl, you know, we pit, as long as you maintain and take care of the tires, maintenance shouldn't be all that big of a deal. I mean, that's all I need to do is just agitate it with some Adams rubber tire cleaner, and then we're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna go around and do all the wheels, and then we'll start addressing the paint here seems like this is my normal washing procedure so i'm not going to do anything to this uh what i might do is hit this with some opti seal you know which is their spray sealant as i'm drying so i'll, I'll probably do that during the drying process at least just hit the face the wheels top it with uh, the sacrificial layer of uh, you know whatever their stuff is made out of uh, i'm going to essentially do the same thing to the truck and then I'm gonna reset it, so I'm gonna clean it really good, or well, uh, and then hit it with some uh, reload. So I'm gonna use reset to get a good cleanse on the coating, get all these bugs and all this dirt off, and then we'll hit it with the, uh, you know, with, uh, with reload just to get a, another quick layer of, uh, if I have time, I hope I do. But, and that's the cool thing, is that if I don't have time to do it, then I'll just do it on the next wash, because uh, I have, only have a couple hours here to get this done before heading out to Ryan's football game. Let's prep. I'm running low on reset. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do reset in the foam cannon, but not as I'm washing the car. So we'll do Adam's car shampoo in the bucket, and then I'll do reset in the foam cannon. This is the part that's still seems a little odd to me that you know the whole point of the coating is to you know simplify and make it last long but it does require a little bit more work to maintain to keep it up you know and putting sacrificial layers on it and doing this you know taking these extra steps to ensure that the coating lasts a long time and does its job but you know no biggie just a couple of things that you, you know, you want to keep in mind to keep it from water spotting. I mean, that's the, that's the biggest issue. I find that they tend to, contaminants aren't so much the issue as the, I put 150 milliliters in that, in the phone cannon. Contaminants are less of an issue than, than water spotting. You know, little annoying water spots. All right, so let's throw this in our bucket, and we'll go fill this up. So we're going, we're going house shopping today. For my parents to move down to get to begin the start of Obsessed Garage headquarters, local headquarters. Mainly so that I can see all my cool stuff and organize it. Since the truck is big, I'm going to fill this up about three quarters of the way. Reset is a little bit more soluble than, it's thinner than like Adams or the Chemical Guys Citrus Wash that I use as the reset soap for, you know, prior to polishing part of the decon phase. All right, so let's foam it up. <laughs> so like normal, we'll rinse the truck off first and then we'll foam it. Hit with lots of bugs, lots of dirt. Anytime you drive at night in Florida, 
bug crazy. So you, you saw in the, if you watch the decontamination video of Michelle's Tahoe, I'm going to have to be more careful with these bugs because I don't want to scratch the corrected paint, right? So I'm going to wash it first, get whatever bugs come off from normal washing, and then I'm going to come back over it after I've rinsed all the dirt off to avoid any, any you know, potential scratching or hopefully at least reduce chance to scratch. So I'm gonna go around, rinse the car, and come back when it's time to foam. I'm shooting this video with the, uh, the F2.8. 17 to 55 millimeter EFS lens on my Canon 80D. I'm gonna see if, uh, I mean, I think it looks a lot, it looks a lot clearer. It's a lot clearer, a lot better looking. than the wide angle lens. The reset is quite a bit milkier. You don't get that really thick foam you get with Adams. But it still foams really well. But I mean, I mean, this stuff works really well. You can, I think you can, you can use this every wash if you wanted to. All right. So we got a reset on the paint. Hopefully that'll help loosen up some of the bugs as well. <laughs> Seems only, only I would have a <laughs> headers and exhaust sitting there just hanging out. Crazy. If only the, if only the 23 year old me knew what the 37 year old me would look like. I think he would have been pretty fired up. And would have been asking why I complain, why I'm, uh, and he would have been asking why I'm so scared all the time. <laughs> or why I'm always, why I would sell any cars, just keep them all. And I'd say, so that I have time to wash them. And it's not even time, it's just energy. So the new thing is, you know, we went out in the villages here, which is a massive retirement community, and looked at, you know, homes for my parents here. And uh, the realtor had a, a P75, a Tesla. And uh, so Michelle wants that instead. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, the P75 is what, uh, Ends up being about eighty thousand bucks. Then you get, you know, so it ends up being about seventy, seventy-five thousand all in after tax, you know, for the tax advantages. So I don't know. It is pretty slick. You know, the P hundred D is what the dual motor is. 150 grand, 140,000 bucks. So I'm not, we're not doing that. All right, so washing, again, when you have a corrected car, and you know, when the car is good, even with a coating, you know, a, a coating, and this is one of those sort of chemical principles, I'm not sure I fully comprehend, that, you know, I'm putting this harder quartz substance on the car, on the painted surface, and yet, I have the same real, maybe a little less susceptible, but I still have the same issues in that I want to be careful that I don't 
you know, they don't scratch it because the, the coating takes on the property of the paint. And so I think, you know, theoretically a softer paint, the coating would scratch, you know, easier. Or I guess would retain because hard paint scratches a lot of times easier than, than soft paint. And so, again, the, the truck, we spent so much time and energy getting this corrected out, getting it looking great. Now it's white, so I could really get into this and really scratch the crap out of it and not notice it as quickly and easily. I want to make sure that I'm caring for this properly in order to make sure I don't end up scratching it. Hope that makes sense because it doesn't make all that much sense to me. You know, people assume that, okay, I've got the car coated, so now I don't have to worry about it. Well, I would argue if you wanted to keep it looking nice, yes, water will bead, yes, it'll protect the surface longer. Yeah, you have less surface tension, so things tend to stick to it less. But, you know, we've got to deal with additional maintenance in order to keep it looking that, looking better like we, like we want it. You playing in the soap, Katie Bell? You playing in the soap? So here's an example. This mirror still got tons of bugs on it. I've used as much aggression as I'm willing to use. And I'll come back after I've sprayed off the heavy dirt and hit that with a bug sponge. So that way I'm not grinding in whatever dirt I've agitated and loosened on the surface. I'm not grinding that into the surface. And then by proxy, reducing the chance of marring because I'm doing that. And so I'm going to do the same thing on the front here. What are you doing with those bubbles, Katie Bell? You're crazy. So, you know, the tendency is the front is so dirty and bugs are so caked on here just from the other night that, you know, the tendency is going to want to be to, you're going to want to start buffing it out, if you will, start grinding into it. So I want to make sure I don't do that because there's also all, kind, all kinds of dirt on the surface. a little backwards. I should have gone over and done the roof on the other side before I messed with this, but we'll be fine. I think the message from the whole GT3 RS series is don't overthink it. Use logic, use common sense, choose a method, and then adjust the method depending on the conditions, depending on the car, depending on the paint, depending on the you know, the coating or whatever, whatever's on the surface. But don't get all high and mighty about whatever, whatever, whatever process you chose. Just choose it and hone it. I've forgotten how much better this lens looks. You know, using the wide angle lens is great. It's a lot easier for me to get everything in frame. But then the edges get all funky. You get distortion on the edges. Plus, makes me look 30 pounds heavier. We got some sun coming through here, but 
you know, it's not hot, so pretty fine. It's like eight in the morning. Man, if I get the S2000 clean today, I have all of my cars clean. That's that's living right there. I'm a simple guy. Give me give me three clean cars. And I'm a happy dude. Give me three clean cars and then stress me out with about 30 hours of, uh, of video to edit. <laughs> So, you know, I'm operating under the same procedure as normal where you know, I'll do one section, flip it, do the next section. You know, your tendency, especially coming up on a ladder, is going to be to do the entire roof just because it's a pain in the butt to get up and down and move it around. But I tend to section this up. Again, especially since I don't want to mar my corrected surface. Who, uh, who the heck wants to negate all that work that we spent so much time on? Now, even following this procedure, you're still over time. You know, the coating is going to degrade. And that's why they say generally you're going to have a two year shelf life, two year operating life of the coating. And then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna mar the surface over time. And that's a real, you know, strong argument for why, you know, like we had that sanding mark on my GT3 RS, why we didn't just start grinding away on it in order to completely remove it. Even with the clear film we put on the car, There is clear film on the bottom of the door here, so I'll be a little bit more aggressive than, than normal. But you know, just normal wear and tear, you're gonna wanna re-correct or re-polish someday. And so if you remove too much paint, then the next time you come and you remove more paint, you know, you end up with potential issues blowing through the clear coat. So, I mean, it's obvious this cleaning procedure here of actually washing the truck is no different than, than normal. So I'm gonna go around, finish this process, and come back to you in a few. Remember, we have all the bugs left over on the front, so first thing I'm gonna do is deionize, get the soap off the car, off the truck. And then I'm gonna come back over so notice, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't emptied out my buckets yet, because we're going to need those to get the rest of this bug crap off of the, off the front. We got good solid beading still. is a monster. It makes it so much more enjoyable to wash the car though when it's like this, I didn't want to wash the truck because it was the paint was all jacked up. You know it's more fun when you have like something on the surface like we do where everything's beating and the water's nicely coming off of it.
All right, so here's the, so again, I've, I've sprayed off the car, the truck, the paint, got all the dirt and junk off of it. I got my buckets here. I'm gonna take my, this is a rag company, bug sponge. And I'm just gonna go over this gently, you know, applying a little bit of pressure when needed, keeping it clean. And then I can get the remaining bugs off of the, off the surface. And I'll do the same thing down here below. This area tends to get pretty contaminated down here around the lower parts of the truck. So I'll come back over here with this, make sure I get and keep that clean. So I'll go around the whole thing looking for any spots that may have built up a little bit. That now I can use a little bit more pressure if needed because I've removed all the sand and stuff that would cause any issues. If I do this regularly, then I, you know, I don't have to worry about build up. I tend to not, you know, these are the areas that tend to get most contaminated. The headlights. And then if I do happen to miss anything, you know, I'll come back when I'm drying, when I have a really clean surface, and I'm able to get whatever a little bit of leftover bugs were there. And so we've got a, you know, a bunch of factors happening here. One, the car is coated and protected. Two, you know, we've lifted the vast majority using the quality soap reset or Adam's car shampoo by foaming. Then we've agitated and removed any surrounding dirt and a large percentage of the bugs. And then we come back here at the end and finish this. And it doesn't take all that much more time to make sure that we're not, you know, we're not marring the surface, causing, you know, causing, you know, scratches that would then make us need to decontaminate, compound or polish, remove the coating, and then reapply. And then we'll get a better bond with our reload here that we're about to put on the surface. Hopefully, I need to hustle up because I'm gonna have to leave here soon. One bucket, two bucket, doesn't matter now. We're at the very last step and most of the dirt should have been taken care of already. All right, so I'm gonna go on the other side, hit those little areas, rinse it the rest of the way, and we'll dry it. Just prior to drying, I'm gonna hit the rotors with some hides. So I go around, hit it just basically like that. And this helps with rusting over. So the combination of hitting that, by the time I get around and dry each wheel, it's done its thing, I've blown any excess off the wheel, and then that helps a little bit with, with rusting. All right, so I just blew the car off. I'm gonna do a reload application. I like to use these big old my uh, giant drying towels waffle weave when applying reload and you don't want to go crazy some people prefer to spray on the towel i prefer to spray directly onto the paint oh yeah no water spots this is great so this is another key to maintaining you know your c quartz or whatever silicon dioxide coating you're using titanium this is titanium dioxide but it's to keep it clean so that you keep it contaminant free and so you know I didn't let the dirt and bugs dwell on there for too too long maybe maybe a week I think I washed this two weeks ago and it stayed relatively clean for a while
but it's amazing how I'm gonna go around here and after all that care and all that time washing and I'm sure some internet car washing experts are gonna give me a hard time but generally I'm still gonna miss some bugs miss some spots you know and you know, the bugs in Central Florida are pretty gnarly so you really gotta you're almost always gonna miss a few spots at least I do so when we're applying reload you know again the, the, the purpose of this is to become the sacrificial layer uh, and so when you get, you know, because one, one deficiency of coatings in general is their uh, susceptibleness to water spots. Oh, there's one little spot I missed right there. A little bug. And so putting reload or putting some sort of sealant or, you know, from whatever company I like to stick with. I like to stick with the products that were engineered specifically for the coating. And so if I'm using Kamikaze, I'm gonna use Overcoat. Shoot. If I'm using, I'm gonna ditch this towel after this front end. If I'm using CarPro, I'm gonna use Reload. It's just how I you know, tend to prefer. Let's use the product that makes sense use the product that is designed for it. Now, I've been testing, see here's another spot. Bug. I've been testing some of the Polish Angel stuff to use on all of these. But for right now, I'm gonna stick with my reload on this, on this truck. Actually, what I can do, rather than swapping the towels, just flip it around. This has just got some dirt on it. But the look of coatings, the look of the coating on like this white, it's starting to grow on me. I'll keep the camera rolling just in case I have something profound to say. And so the windows have optimum glass coat, which is there. So I'm not gonna reload the windows. Bugs always gonna get trapped in this front area. Anyway, I was saying the the glass has optimum glass coat on it, the consumer version, which I think is great. I like it much better than the more professional type window coatings. They don't they just react. They do better with um, with your windshield wipers. They don't judder. Oh. Oh, this looks great. And so we're going to do Optimum's glass clean and protect on it. So with reload, with most spray sealants you want to use it i don't want to say sparingly sparingly but you want to use it appropriately I mean, you don't need to cake it on here then it just makes it harder to keep it from smearing i'm going to take i'm going to flip this around so I urge you, give Waffle Weave a try in this step of applying your coating top coat. It's just it's my preference. This tends to do a much better job. So again, here's a little glancing bug. I can then, because I have a good clean surface, I can either spray a little extra reload on to lubricate or many times I can just apply a tiny little bit of pressure and I'll remove whatever was left over. This stuff that you can't see while you're while you're washing. 
and I, I don't think you want, you don't want to go too far ahead when dealing with reload. You want to get it off the paint or I guess on the paint spread evenly as quickly as possible. And so I usually will only do a couple of panels at a time at the very most. And again, white, white is much more forgiving than colors. You know, it'll tend to tend to streak. All right, so that's the that's the process of applying your top coat sealant. I'm going to go around and finish all the surfaces. All right, so we've got optimum glass, clean and protect. You don't want to use this on the inside ever because it will induce you'll be fog crazy. But this is a, you know, again we have optimum glass coating on here, the consumer grade version. And so this is just a quick way for us to top that. Much like Reload is topping the the coating, the C quartz. This is then in turn topping That's not very clean. This is topping the the glass coating. And then these are my navy waffle weave from the rag company that you can get in the Seth's Garage store. I'm so fond of. I don't know why I have two of them in my hand here. So I'm gonna go hit the I'm gonna hit the glass and this will be finished. I'm gonna to have to come. I'm gonna to have to come back because uh, we got running late. I'm running. I ran out of time here, so I gotta go head to Ryan's game. I'll come back and we'll address the tires and deal with the, the trim and the uh, door jams. So what happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. To the floor. To the floor. To the floor. 